By the end of this video, you will understand when parameterized unit testing is appropriate and how you can leverage the tools available from the JUnit params package to build single unit tests that can run for many different circumstances or arguments. The class we will be testing is called Student Score Calculator. So this class contains just a single method called Calculate SAT Score. It will take in two integers, one which is the student's uh, score in maths, and then second we have the literacy score. These scores are typically between 0 and 100, so we have an if statement to check that the math score and literacy score are both from 0 to 100, otherwise it will set the SAT score as negative 1. Otherwise, the SAT score will be the product of the math score and the literacy score. I have also included a getter for the SAT score, which we will use to test that the calculate SAT score method has correctly set the SAT score. So I've created a class where we can test the student score calculator, and that's called student score calculator test in the test Java directory of our application. So before we start actually writing the tests, I just want to think about what kind of test scenarios we'd like to include for this calculate SAT score, because there is an if statement in here, and there are quite a few different Boolean values we want to satisfy or to make sure that we have coverage for, as all of these will set the SAT score to minus one. So we might have a regular math score and literary score, uh, two values between 0 and 100. But we might also want to check that the math score being negative is correctly setting the SAT score to negative 1. The same goes for the literacy score being negative. The same going for both of them being negative. And then you would also have quite a few other test cases where math score is over 100, literary score is over 100. We may also want to test what would happen if the math score is 0 and the literary score is uh, between 0 and 100, and vice versa. But what we want to do is cover all the edge cases that we might have for this very single method. So I'm going to move into the student score calculator test, and we're going to begin writing our unit tests for all the different kind of scores we might have. So this first test will be for just two regular scores between 0 and 100. Okay, so within the first test, we've instantiated a student score calculator known as SC. And then we've called the calculate SAT score, passing in a math score of 50 and a literary score of 50. And then we've used the assert equals assertion, where our expected value is 2500. And then we've used the sc.getSAT score uh, method to obtain uh, the actual SAT score for that instance of the student score calculator. What I'm now going to do is write out all the other unit tests, following very much the same structure. However, we're changing the math score to be negative or uh, very high, and the same goes for the literary score being negative or very high, and typically each time the expected value would be negative 1, because we're going to be returning true for the if statement from the calculate SAT score. So we've written seven unit tests for the calculate SAT score. So we have the regular one, we have one where the math score is negative, one where the literary score is negative, one where they're both negative, one where the math score is high, one where the literary score is high, and one where they're both high. I'm just going to quickly clean this up using the before annotation so I can remove some of the instantiation code for the student store calculator. So this approach to unit testing is effective, however, it is quite inefficient. The difference between each of these individual unit tests 
are really just a few parameters. So we have the math score changing, the literacy score changing, and the expected value changing. So when we see quite a few different unit tests that all look very similar to each other, but with just a few different changes in the arguments or parameters that they're using, this would be a very big sign to us that we want to use parameterized unit testing for this test class as opposed to the regular way that we have for writing unit tests. So I'm going to create a new test class which we will use for writing the parameterized version of our first test class. And the first thing I'm going to do is annotate this student score calculator test params class with run with and I will pass in the junit params runner dot class. So annotating our class will instruct junit to use a special kind of runner from the junit params library that will grant us access to some of the functionality that we will require. Just check within your build file that you have the appropriate dependency for the junit params runner, which is this dependency here. Second, I'm going to write our test method, which will be used for taking in different parameters that will then be used for testing. So the first thing you will notice with this test method is that it takes in a few parameters. First, it takes in a value for the math score. Second is for a value for the letter score. And third is a value for what we expect the final score to be. We then instantiate a student score calculator instance. And then we pass in the values of the math score and the literary score to the calculator SAT score method of the, of the student score calculator. And then lastly, we pass in an assertion where we take the expected score as the expected value, and then we get the actual value by calling the student score calculator get SAT score. The third step will involve actually creating a method that returns the parameters that we would like to test into this test method. So we need to create a method within our test class that returns an array of objects. And then we will be passing that array into this method for it to extract these three values. We have a method that returns an array of objects. The array of objects which this test values method returns will consist of further arrays of objects with three values each within them. And the idea here is that we're passing in each array into our test method. And then that test method will extract the first value as the math score, the second value as the literary score, and the third as the expected score. So for our first test, where we had 50 as math score, 50 as literary score, and 2500 as the expected score. And then I can continue replicating these arrays. So we would have minus 1, 50, and minus 1, and then so on. 50, negative 1, negative 1. So we've covered the array of values which we have from our original class. And now we just need to pass them into the student score calculator test method. And we can do that by adding a final parameter to our test method that will use the array of objects we defined within test values. 
So we use the parameters annotation and within there we define an argument called method and this will be where the array of objects are returned from and the name of our method is called test values. I'm just going to now run the test method. And now what, can, what we can see is that we've just run a single method. However, a total of seven tests have been run for that one instance. And we can see that we've defined different parameters for this test, which have been passed in from the test values method from above within this class. So if we were to test uh, other kinds of parameters for this method, we wouldn't have to write a whole new test method for that. We can just add to this array of objects. So I can test for two values being zero. So zero math score, zero literary score would turn an expected value of zero. I can also do the same for a higher score possible, which would be 100 for both. And then that would return 10,000. And this is a far more efficient way of testing many different parameters for a very, very similar kind of unit test. So that summarizes this video on how we can use parameterized unit testing framework from the JUnit params runner. So to reiterate, you would want to be using it where you have very similar test methods that just alter the arguments that it, that it passes in. And we can implement the JUnit params runner through the annotation of the test class by creating a method that returns an object of arrays, which are then passed in by defining the parameters of where they're coming from and then within the actual test method themselves.